We saw in previous videos how to initially add a crosstab to a report. Now we'll take a closer look at how to make some modifications to this added crosstab table. It should be noted that in order to fully understand what the final product of the crosstab will look like, you will need to save your work and actually run the report, sometimes multiple times, as the preview is good for color scheme and appearance, but since the report designer has no idea of what data will populate the table, the full size and shape of the table can't always be represented in any of the previews. A great deal of the modifications of the crosstab will be defining the properties to adjust how the crosstab prints when it's too big to fit in the space that's been defined by the report container. We'll see how to do this coming up in a bit. For now, let's look at how we can modify the selections for the column and the row definitions. If we start by double clicking on the crosstab in the tool window on the far left, we can reopen the crosstab window, and on the access definition, we can start to make our modifications. First, changing the row values. Let's say we want to change up the table, and instead of class, we want this to display the months of the year. For this, we can delete the existing class value, then click on the Insert a New Row Grouping button. At this point, we may have a couple of options depending on what our query returns for data. This is an important consideration for how we want this to appear. Do we want the number of each month or the name? As a part of your query, you can pull just the month value of a given date, such as the reported or occurred date time fields. But this is a number and the report designer sees this as a number and not as the month. So if we selected this in our query and we use it here, you will be limited to just the numerical value. But if you selected the full date time field, we can utilize functions within the report designer where we could parse out just the month as either the number or the name. This will give us a little bit more flexibility in terms of how we may want this data represented. So how do we use this month function in the report designer? Before selecting the date time field for this row, we can start to type month. And here we'll see there's two functions that can be used, month and month with a dollar sign. The month will pull the numerical value of the month, whereas the second month option with a dollar sign will pull the name of the month. For our row definition, we actually want to use the one without the dollar sign. This way our months will be sorted numerically, one, two, three, and so on. If we were to choose the string function with a dollar sign, our months would be sorted alphabetically, April, August, December, and so on. And so in this case, they would appear out of order. Next, for our columns, we'll make a slight change by also adding in another grouping. In this case, let's add in the building. This will add another line that displays each building for each of our campuses in the cross tab table. Now, on the cell definition tab, we can adjust the appearance properties for the cells within the table. Or if we want to make the same change across multiple cells, we can do that as well. Let's start with the heading cells. These are basically just row and column titles. So the first question is, is there a need to have these? In our case, let's say for the rows, no, but yes for the columns. If we single click on the row heading, then in the properties below, we can scroll down to the appearance condition field in the layout section and change from yes to no. The cell still does appear in the preview above, but with cross hatches through it it will now be hidden in the final table. For the column heading, we can single click on the cell, then in the displayed contents field, note that it has a value of heading between quotation marks. Here, we can simply replace heading with our new title, campus building. Just ensure that the value remains between the quotation marks. Once we've done that, in the properties below, we can also modify the font and change the size and appearance. In the background field, we could also adjust its appearance if we don't want a colored background. We could change this to transparent. For the month cell, which is currently represented as a number, again, in that displayed contents field, we can see the function that we already entered back on that access definition tab. Here, we can change the function to the string function with the dollar sign. This way, we can maintain the numerical sort, but simply change the way that value is being displayed in this case to the name rather than the number. Now let's change the font of both the month and the campus cells so that they're the same. To do this we can press and hold the control key and then single click on both of those cells. In this case for the font we can navigate to the font field and change the appearance of the font and then we can repeat this same process for any other cells within the table, changing colors, font appearances, and so on either by single clicking on a cell by cell basis or by pressing and holding the control key and selecting multiple cells where we're going to make the same change.
Finally, on the Properties tab at the top of the window, we can perform our final configurations. Here, we can adjust the properties for how the crosstab will print within the allotted space of our report container. As mentioned earlier, we saw that in the original crosstab it didn't fit within the space. It was wider than the report container, so a portion of the table that didn't fit ended up printing on a new page. The properties we'll focus on here are in the Wrapping Options section. It's broken down into columns and rows. This area here is one of the best examples of why you may need to actually run the report to see how much space the crosstab takes up and where you may need to make these configuration changes. In this case, our issue will be with the columns. Previously, the table was too wide, and now it will be even wider with the addition of our buildings at each campus. The first property we're going to modify is the break level. This property tells the report designer where to stop and start printing values when the crosstab is too big to fit within the space provided. By default, this is set to zero, which is the innermost level of our columns. In this case, this is the building level. So, the report designer will print a table with as many buildings that will fit in the space provided. When there's no more room, the next building will print somewhere else, which we'll take a look at that setting in just a minute. So, is this how we want it to print? In this scenario, it may stop and start printing mid-campus, printing half of the buildings on one page and the remaining buildings on another. For this example, it may be better represented if we keep all of the buildings of a campus together. In which case, if there isn't enough room for it to print all of the buildings of a campus, it stops printing before the start of that campus. I can accomplish this by changing the break level to 1, which is the next level up, or in our case, the campus level. Next, we can identify where this overlapping data will print, which is currently on a separate page called a shadow page. We can leave it this way, but there's two potential issues with this option. One, if there is a table or a chart or some other element that appears in our report after our crosstab, it will actually print between the initial start of our crosstab and this overlapping table data. Two, shadow pages aren't counted. So if you happen to have a page count on your report where this overlapping data prints, it will not have a count, nor will it be reflected in the overall page totals. So if we change the setting from yes to no, then the overlapping data will print directly below the initial start of our crosstab if there's space to do so. The advantage here is that if there is no room below, then the overlapping data will still print on another page, but tables, charts, and any other elements that may appear after our crosstab will actually continue to be pushed until the entire crosstab is fully printed. Also, these extra pages will be counted in our page counts. Another setting we can configure here is to choose to repeat the labels for both the rows and the columns. Once done, we can click OK and see the newly modified crosstab. Remember though, you may need to actually run the report to see the overall appearance of how the crosstab looks within the report. Another option for optimizing the appearance of a crosstab is to adjust the paper layout. Again, depending on what the crosstab may be showing, maybe a landscape orientation would be a better fit as opposed to a portrait. But what about the other elements within your report? Maybe those fit better on portrait rather than landscape. In the Project tab at the top of the screen, you can switch back and forth between both orientations, but this applies to the entire report. And if you already have added objects on your report, including a report container, you may need to resize and reposition each object in order to fit this new orientation should you change it. With that said, you can utilize functions within the Report Designer that allow you to change the orientation for just certain objects. Just note though that this doesn't work if you run the report in Word or an Excel format, but it will work if you do choose to run your report as a PDF. To do this, we'll first change the name of our crosstab to simplify it. Ensure our crosstab is selected in the tool window on the far left, then in the properties window in the name field or at the very top, we can enter in a new, simpler name. I'll call it crosstab. Next, in the tool window on the far left again, click on the report container at the top of the window. Then, in the Properties window, navigate down to the Layout section, the Position subsection, and then to the Width and Height fields. This is where we can see the size of the report container. What we have to do here is add a function that tells the report designer how big the report container is in relation to the size of the page, so that when we change the orientation of the page, the report container changes with it. Without doing this, the report container will print as if the page is still in portrait and so we'll lose some of our table. Take note of what this existing size is, because we'll have to make a conversion here to make this work. We'll start with the width. Click on the Formula button within the Width field, 
Again, make note of what the current value is and then delete it. Then in the window above, expand the variables folder, then the LL folder, device, page, size, and then double click on CX. This adds the paper width to the window below. Next, enter a hyphen for the minus function and type unit from SCM. This allows us to subtract a certain amount of width from the page. If our page is eight and a half inches wide and the report container was approximately seven and a half inches, then we need to subtract one inch. The key here is that this must be entered in metric and one inch equals 25,400 millimeters. Now we'll repeat this for the height. This time selecting the CY, then subtracting 38,100 millimeters for about an inch and a half to give us a height of nine and a half inches. Now we can click on the project tab at the top of the window, then click on the layout regions button. Here we can create this new landscape region and identify when we want to use it. Click on the insert button at the top of the window, then in the properties on the right, in the description field, label it landscape so you know for future changes if you need it. In the orientation field, change from portrait to landscape. Then in the condition field, we'll enter a formula to identify when we want this layout used. From the variables and the LL folders, double click on the current container item option. This adds it to the window below. Next we'll enter in an equals sign and then within quotation marks, type the name of our crosstab. Here, what we've done is we've entered in a condition that reads, when the current container item equals crosstab, use the landscape orientation. Otherwise, use portrait. Once finished, click OK. Just note you may see a notification that this region is not active. Do you want to activate it? For this, you can select no. This process is a little lengthy, but it can be very useful for certain elements within your report to ensure that the print and the display of the data is in the most efficient manner.